Hi students, welcome to Mathematics Exam Solutions. We're going to look at interval estimates for proportions and go through a lot of questions and how to do those questions. In question one, we're going to identify the following instances as either a population parameter or a sample statistic. So A, according to census data, which is an important word, collected at enrolment, 97% of students speak English as their first language. That would be a population parameter because we're talking about the entire population. B, between 3% and 15% of children who leave home and return within 12 months. That's a population parameter. C, a sample was recorded and three out of every five students brought an apple with their lunch. So here you've got a sample of five students and three of them brought an apple because it's a sample, it's a sample statistic. Results from a poll show 83% of students floss daily. Now you've got a poll here, which is only a sample for a population. And lastly, 87% of the entire 2015 school leaver cohort studied one of the mathematics subjects. Uh, that's the entire population. That's a population parameter. Question two, identify the sampling method used in each case. The first one, Cody asks every eighth person in the tuck shop line what they plan to order. That is a systematic sample, every eighth person. Mrs. Carl is thinking about changing the time lunch occurs at school. She divides the population into year groups and ensures that her sample has the same proportion as the population. This is a stratified random sample because she's trying to get the proportions to match the population. In C, the staff at Happy Cafe leave out cards for customers to complete if they wish about their level of satisfaction with their service. This is a self-selected sample because it's just up to the surveyor if they actually want to do it, the customer. And D, a student wanting to quiz her class writes the names of her students on cards, shuffles the cards, and then selects 10 names. That would be called a random sample. In question three, we have N equaling 1000. Being capital N, that's the population number. The sample is 100 and P is 0.3. The value of P is the percentage of successes in the population, so it's 30%. Let's calculate the mean of the distribution. Now, our population, our mean, is the actual percentage of successes in the population. The same value, or the sample proportion of successes, which is P hat, should model that, and that's also 0.3. The standard deviation of the distribution is recalling the formula from the formula page or selecting the formula from the formula page, which is the square root of P times one take P over N. We substitute our values in and the standard deviation is approximately 0.046. Question four, suppose that 22% of the people in a certain country have blonde hair. That's the proportion of successes in the population, that's P. If a random sample of 85 people is selected from that country, calculate the mean and standard deviation of the proportion of people with blonde hair. So here we're saying that our uh, sample proportion of successes is equivalent to the proportion of successes in the population. That is, it's 0.22. Hence, I can work out the standard deviation, which is using the formula shown here. I'm going to sub in 0.22. Our number is 85. Standard deviation is 0.045. So we worked out the mean, and we worked out the standard deviation. We've calculated the mean and calculated the standard deviation. Question five. A survey showed that 56 out of a random sample of 125 people regularly shop online. So our sample size is 125 and 56 were successful. Calculate the margin of error in an approximate 95% confidence interval for P. So our sample proportion of successes is 56 out of 125. You can change that to a decimal if you wish. The error is simply at 95%, your Z score is 1.96 times the standard deviation. So we're going to sub in 0.448 for P and 125 for N. So the margin of error is 0 0.0872. So that's what we use to work out the interval, interval later on, where we add and subtract that number. Question six, from a random sample of 150 voters, it was found that 
said that they had not decided who to vote for at the next election. Apply technology to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of voters that were undecided. First step is using a Casio, we're going to select statistics. Next, we're going to select INTR. From that, we're going to select Z. And then we're going to select one proportion. So now we have a one, um, one proportion Z interval where I want to make the confidence interval 95%. The number of successes was 54. Now, how did I work that out? 36% of the 150 voters. So just work out what 36% of 150. You can even type in X, 0.36 times 150, and it'll change it to 54 for you. N is 150. We then press Enter for Exec, and our sample, or our interval, is our lower is about 28%, and our upper is about 44%. In a recent voter survey, an approximate 90% confidence interval for the proportion of people who will vote for a particular party is between 58% and 66. Calculate the value for P, which is the sample proportion of successes for this confidence interval. Now here, you know the lower is 58 and the upper is 66. So halfway is actually gonna be your P hat, which is your uh, proportion of successes for the sample which is 62. If you think about it, the middle of 62, if you go up four, you get the 66, and if you go back four, you get the 58. Hence, I really just said the next answer. Think the center of the distribution is 62. The high boundary, boundary is 66. The difference is the margin of error. 66 takes 62% is 4%. That's your margin of error. Nice and simple. Looks like it could be complicated, but it's a really quick question. primary school principal wishes to find out how students get to school. She positions herself at the school's bike racks at the start of school and asks students to fill out a short questionnaire. Do you think this sample will be representative of the general school population? Explain. No, this will not be representative. The students who start school at the bike racks are likely to get to school by a bicycle, um, hence it, or other, any, sort of, any other valid sort of argument. But it's not going to be representative because you basically picked a spot where people are most likely going to be riding a bike. The method should result in a sample that is representative of the whole school population. Consideration should be given to ensuring subgroups are equally represented in the sample, which we haven't done so. For instance, use a random number generator to select students for a survey. You ensure that proportions of boys and girls reflect the proportions in the population. There are just some ways that we can make it a lot more representative of the school population. Question nine. In a population of 2 million, which is capital N, it is believed that P is 2%. Determine the smallest sample size that could, could be considered large. A sample needs to fulfill the following criteria. So by criterion one, that we have 10 lots of N, it has to be less than or equal to the population N, which is 2 million. We divide both sides by 10. N has to be less than or equal to 200,000. By criterion two, NP has to be greater than or equal to 10. So our P is 2% times what number will make us greater than or equal to 10? We divide both sides by 0.02. N has to be greater than or equal to 500. That's our number we want. We need to have 500 or more. Therefore, the smallest sample size that could be considered large is 500. Each year, the Year 7 class from Green High visit a theme park. 150 of the students decided to go on the Monster Roller Coaster and 30 of them complained of feeling dizzy afterwards. Calculate the value of the sample proportion. That is, the number of successful outcomes divided by the number of trials, which is 30 out of 150 felt dizzy, which is 20%. Create an expression for the 95% confidence interval for the likelihood of feeling dizzy. So the 95% confidence interval is your sample proportion of successes, which is p hat, plus or minus 1.96, which that's 95%, times the standard deviation, which is 0.2, plus or minus 1.96. We're now subbing in our 0.2. One take 0.2 is 0.8, and we have 150 sampled. 
So it's 0.2 plus or minus 0 0.064, which is our margin of error, which gives us values between 13.6% and 26.4%. We can be 95% confident that between 13.6% and 26.4% of Year 7 students will be dizzy. Just continuing with this question, now to find C, the margin of error has already been calculated. The margin of error is 1.96 at 95% times the standard deviation. So margin of error, we've already worked that out, and that was the 6.4%. So it feels like the question C could be asked as B, and then B becomes C. Cadbury are 90% certain that between 63% and 85% enjoyed their line of chocolates. Determine how many people were sampled for this level of confidence. Use mathematical reasoning to justify the solution. So that's our lower, and that's our upper end of the confidence interval. So calculate the proportion of successes. That is, simply by working out the average of those two. That is 74%. Next, you can work out a margin of error, because our higher value, which is 85%, take the sample of proportion of successes, P, at, which is 74, and margin of error is 11%. Now, apply the rule for a confidence interval for 90%. And here, I'm not doing plus and minus. I'm just going to work on the upper end. That is, I'm really just using the margin of error formula to work out N. So 90% gives Z value is 1.645. The margin of error is 11%. I know P hat here, which is 74%. I've just got to work out N. So I'm going to sub in 74%. The only unknown I have is N. Now I just use inverse operations and solve for N. So we divide both sides by 1.645. Then we could square both sides. Next, I can um, uh, multiply both sides by n. And then I'm going to divide by this to get n or isolate n. Now applying that, working it out in a calculator, evaluating it, n is 43.028. So to be certain here, it's about not 43 people have been sampled to um, provide that level of confidence. Suppose the probability of a student being an only child is 22% and a sample of five students was chosen. The table below summarizes the sample distribution or the proportion of only child or student from a sample of five. Is your sample of five um, you could have zero to five successes out of five. Now, five out of five is just one. Now, a table here has the probabilities worked out, but we just need to figure out n. So calculate the constant value a. The sum of those probabilities has to equal one. Hence, if we add all those up, we have work out the sum it has to equal one. We're going to simplify that. 93.06%. We can take that from both sides. So a is about 6.94 percent. Use the sampling distribution to determine the probability that a proportion of single children is less than 40 percent. So 2 out of 5 is 40 percent. We want to be less than. So 2 out of 5 is 40 percent. We want to be less than. So it's this one and this one. So really we're just adding up these two values here. The probability being less than 0.4 is this plus this, which is 69.59 percent. The coin is tossed 200 times and 104 heads observed. So 104 is your number of successes, 200 is your sample size. Calculate a point estimate for P, the probability of observing a head when this coin in particular is tossed. So the number of successes was 104 at a total of 200 in a sample, so about 52%. Let's develop a 95% confidence interval. 95% confidence interval is a Z score of 1.96. So we're going to have our p hat plus or minus 1.96 times by the standard deviation. Now our value here was 52%. One take, 52 is 48. My n is 200. Now I'm simply going 0.52 plus or minus 6.92%. That interval is 45.1% through to 58.9%.
RJ PJ Industries surveyed 150 people who believe that between 80% and 95% of their customers are satisfied with their level of service. Determine how confident they are about the claim. So N, the sample size is 150. Your sample proportion of successes is the average or in between, what's halfway between 80 and 95, which is 87.5%. Determine the Z, using the upper and lower, upper of the two boundaries. So the upper of the two boundaries is 95%. So we know this, we know this, we know this, we just don't know what level of confidence they have, we just don't know what Z is. So 87.5% was my P hat. I don't know Z, but I can sub in my 87.5 twice, and we knew that 150 people were surveyed. So the only value I don't know is Z. And my right hand side is the upper limit. Next, we're going to subtract 0.875 from both sides, and then underneath this radical sign, we'll simplify it. Next, we're going to divide both sides by this, and evaluating on a calculator, the Z score was 2.78. If you're a Z score of 2.78, that's the number that you use if you're 99% confident. So there's a 99% likelihood that the proportion will lie in this interval. The distribution for p-hat has a standard deviation of 0 0.04. If the sample size is 100, calculate the population proportion. So little n, which is the sample, is 100. The standard deviation formula is the square root of p times 1 take p over n. Now we know that our standard deviation is 0 0.04. Let's substitute that into our left-hand side. We know the sample size is 100, so all we can do now, or what we need to do now is find P. So we're going to take the square, or we're going to square both sides, which is inverse operations of a square root. We're then going to multiply both sides by 100. So now we've got 0.16 equals P outside of one take P. Now if we expand that, P times one is P, P times P is P squared. Then if we uh, rearrange to make P squared the positive, we have a quadratic. quadratic well, and to solve a quadratic, you can use the quadratic formula, the calculator, you can complete the square here. After choosing any one of those methods, the values could be 0.2 or 0.8. That's the end of interval estimates for proportions. Keep working hard in your studies and good luck on examinations.